Casey Thompson, Nebraska starting quarterback last year, enters the transfer portal. That is definitely news. And the thing about it, Nick, we were just talking about this. Um, literally right before, yeah. right before, uh, right before Aaron came in. Yeah, about 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes ago. Yeah, we we're yep. just talking about this. The probability of that, uh, I didn't think was going to happen because it'd be his third school. Um, but anything can happen nowadays. Nothing is. <laughs> Nothing should shock or surprise any of us anymore with the with the transfer portal and you add in the NIL as well. Nothing could, but that one definitely did. Unknown texture, I'm right with you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love the guy too. Um, but it, it shows you too. That's why I've been this way, Nick, with the Riola situation. I'm not getting attached to anybody. It's almost mm-hmm. like because you never know if they're going to be here or not. If they're here, that's fine. But when they leave, it's just it's a, it's a transient culture of college football right now. Go ahead, brother. Well, I, I think okay. So th- this one, this one stings a little bit because Casey was was a, was a really pleasant dude, um, real really good dude to to talk to and and things like that. Um, and there's always going to be what ifs, like what if Casey wasn't injured this spring, and what if I'll come out and say it. I I think Casey Thompson was the best quarterback in that room. Is the best quarterback in that room. Mm-hmm. I, I truly did think so. I, mm-hmm. I also said, though, earlier that unconsciously there might be some bias mm-hmm. with this staff towards Jeff Sims. And I like that's not a, that's not a, an abnormal thing. That's not an unusual thing. Mm-hmm. That's that's normal because everybody wants their, their guys, their personnel. I get that. Mm-hmm. And if listen, if Jeff Sims under Matt Rule and Marcus Satterfield is if that's what's going to take Nebraska to six to eight to nine wins, mm-hmm. then do it. Do whatever yeah. you got to do. Do whatever you got to do to win. Um, I just worry now Nebraska's depth at quarterback. You started this transfer portal cycle just last weekend with six guys on scholarship in that quarterback room. And now you are down to three Gosh. and you talk about one thing that's plagued Nebraska over the last X amount of years has been the lack to lack of ability to to get a, a backup quarterback to be successful. You look at other teams in the big 10. The first one that always comes to my mind, mm-hmm. Minnesota last year. Yeah. They had yeah. Tanner Morgan. Who's a, who's like a fifth or six year guy last year who was blowing it up, just playing. I mean, just pooping all over the field against Nebraska last year. PJ Fleck makes a change to Kaliak Manis during the game. And that's how Minnesota ends up beating Nebraska coming from behind mm. in the second half on the road and beating Nebraska Memorial Stadium because their backup quarterback was ready to go. Right. If Tanner Morgan's still in that game, mm-hmm. I think Nebraska wins that game. Yeah. 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 But then you look at, unfortunately, what Nebraska's had to do over these last couple of years and like, think about it. It's been Adrian Martinez. And when he win slash if slash the inevitable happened. He got banged up or hurt right. or just bad play. Right. It was such a major drop off mm-hmm. to a Luke McCaffrey. And unfortunately, like last year, it was such a, it felt like such a drastic drop off to Chubba Purdy. And that's not, that's not necessarily anything specifically against Chubba Purdy, but I came into now just an hour ago thinking Nebraska's in a much better spot than they have been with quarterbacks because yeah. Whoever doesn't, first of all, I think an an authentic battle for QB one is is healthy. Yeah, I think that's something that Nebraska's missed ever since twenty eight. Un- unfortunately, ever I mean, you can go back farther. Ever since it started with Adrian Martinez and Tristan Jebbia, mm-hmm. it, it, they they're they're starving for I think a a a productive quarterback battle or just position battle across multiple positions. But now you look at it. And Jeff Sims is going mm-hmm. to be the starting quarterback. He, he's going. This tells us that yeah. Jeff Sims is going to be the starting quarterback. You know, I don't. Else? I don't care how great of a story Heinrich Harburg was in the spring. I, I don't care how how well Chubba Purdy filled in or didn't fill in for you last year, or how he's looking in spring. Mm-hmm. Jeff Sims is going to be Nebraska's starting quarterback. You know what? Uh, we got to have Tom on uh, Massey for next week. Tom's taking. He had a good point. Text me and he goes. Uh, this shows they want more of a running a running quarterback. Yeah, that shows and that's fine. And I have no problem with that. And that's fine. Yeah, just yeah. make sure you have the depth for yeah, it. Yeah, you got to have it because, because when when the inevitable happens and Jeff Sims gets banged up, yeah. or or whatever happens, yeah. 
are you going to be able to run your offense efficiently? Maybe not as efficiently. That's okay. A run game. But are you are you going to be, number one, be able to have a running back room or yeah. an offensive line that's able to open up holes for the running backs? Mm -hmm. And number two, is whoever's going to step in under center for you going to be able to run the offense efficiently? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if the answer is no, then they got to now go get somebody from the transfer yeah. portal. Yeah. They have, they have to. Yeah, and I, the worst part about that is now you're pitching somebody to come into Nebraska and say, hey, man, sorry, we got a guy that's here for two years mm -hmm. and Jeff Sims, who's going to be the starting quarterback, but you're the guy if he gets hurt. That's your pitch. Or this is a crazy twist of things. Maybe you think you're landed at Riola. <laughs> you just uh, never know. Like I said, y'all. This is the wild, wild west of college sports as we know it now. Nothing is guaranteed. Yeah. Um, and Raph is going. It's, uh, it's Jay. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, Raph is goes. Uh, Thank you. Go to the portal for some others. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's the thing. Let's uh, let's let's pause ten seconds for station identification. Yeah. This is Lincoln's home for sports talk on the FM dial. Also online at theticketfm.com on the internet. KNTK FM for ninety three seven. The ticket. All right, so we'll go ahead and okay. So since we're gonna kind of cross over here, obviously somewhat breaking news. Casey Thompson is uh, entering the transfer portal. Nebraska is down to three scholarship quarterbacks. Now, I, I completely agree with Mississippi Mud Dog here. Before we get to the Husker Hall of Famer, Jay Form on the text line, they say, I agree it's good to have a healthy battle for quarterback one. I think it's just hard for that to happen in the day and age of transfer portal. Also, I can't blame Casey for leaving. He wants to play, and right now there's no guarantee that that will happen here. I agree with that. I, you do not. I, I can't blame Casey Thompson for leaving and deciding to try to go somewhere else. In, in this day and age because he's going to have a lot of opportunities. Let's go to the phone lines. We bring in Jay Foreman. Jay, what's on your mind, man? What's the what's the thought process? Because we were just talking about this on Old School a couple days ago. Yeah, we were. And, uh, you know, we even yesterday um, when we were talking about it, that, you know, there's going to be some big names that jump in there. It's kind of like, you know, there's a, always a big or something in the NFL and in, in, in the transfer portal. Um, you know, it's a big name, and there will be, a, you know, maybe another known name or guy that I played before uh, um, without he's a starting quarterback. But, um, you know, it's not a bad thing for Casey. It's not really necessarily a bad thing for Nebraska football. I mean, you know, I agree with you, Nick. A good, healthy battle would have been it. But, you know, realistically, and, and whether people want to admit it not or, or admit it or, or not, would it really been a truly healthy battle? You know, yeah, you got 20-some practices in or whatever in spring. But Casey's played a numerous amount of football. You're not that far ahead of him. And it's a, it, you can't probably came down to a risk-reward for Casey. Dude. You know, yeah, you can't never doubt that he's a competitor. We know that. But then at some time as a competitor, you got to make sure that you're strategic and smart in this day in college uh, of football, right? Well, mm -hmm. where is this? Like, you got people sitting behind their computer. Oh, he should have stayed, battled it out, and see what happened, and then he didn't make it stay there. Well, you know, it's one thing to go in 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 and fight the good in in if it's even you know even contest and you lose, you know you can you know like the Bryce, you know just you know you know you know hold your head high. But if you're going into it and you know that you're not the favorite, then you know that that's actually borderline stupidity as an athlete. And with the amount of open starting positions or, or university power five are looking for established quarterback. It's no different than Adrian. You know, Adrian was in the portal two days after the season, maybe even the day after the season last year, he was able to go to Kansas state and start. And he was coming off maybe the same shoulder injury or whatever. Um, in case he showed an improvement and stuff like that. So, you know, it's a big deal just because of uh, the quarterback position. I don't think it's a big deal because of the foregone conclusion, anybody that can kind of, you know, really look at it realistically knew Jeff Sims was going to be the starting quarterback and you know rightfully so in, in time will tell you know how well he plays but everybody else needs to play well around him so Jay let me um, ask you this man you know Casey could do some good things go ahead Hall of Fame let me ask you this does did it and you with your with the, the, the exhaustive experience that you have man does this somewhat uh raise the question that he's emphasized in more of a running game uh, you know, I think, you know, look, he passed it 13 times in a spring game. I think he'll, he'll throw the ball. I think the offensive playbook isn't all the way open yet. And so I don't think they're going to come back and run like the option, like Tommy Frazier, but I think that Jeff Sims gives them a, 
dynamic of uh, the, a true running threat. Now, Casey can run, and that's what people don't realize. Like Casey, Casey is fast, and he can run. He's a great athlete and a great he field. Never job. really right. He never had to. So, I think the RPO option will be there, um, but I, I don't think that they're just going to be solely RPO and like Jeff Sims can't pass. You know, as you've seen that he has a live arm. Um, I think they're going to work extensively with them to get better and get more consistent. And, you know, the, you know, everybody, you know, in the turnovers at Georgia Tech, you know, it wasn't all his fault and it was a lack of experience. He was 18 years old playing against some dudes out there. I mean, he was 18 year old, 18 years old, you know, whatever he was playing against Clemson, you know, playing against the likes of Florida State, North Carolina and all that, you know, that's a, it's, it's a recipe for a disaster if you don't have guys around you to be successful. So, um, I think, yeah, I mean, it'll be there. I mean, he, let's just take Jeff Sims out of it. The the hype around Heinrich Harburg, right? And Chubba Purdy still being on the roster. Yes, he would have to sit out a year if he went power five. But realistically, for Chubba to go somewhere and when walk right in the start, wouldn't be at a power five right now. He doesn't right. have the experience. And he doesn't have the plate, the, the tape to, to warrant that. Yeah, so, he doesn't have the body of work to even show that. He, right. But he has the ability to run. And so I think, you know, he would you know, Casey, I'm happy for Casey. I'm happy for Nebraska, right? This is a good thing. It sucks because I, I truly believe <laughs> it, it, Casey would have made them lose a lot more sleep than they were planning on to when it got down to business. Yeah, now, yeah, right. I think it worked. I, I, I think it worked out great for everybody and will. Casey will be fine. He's a smart kid. He's tough. Good quarterback. It'll work out for us. Just Sims has a potential, and they'll set him up to be successful. Now – what you're starting to see. And I always try to look at it maybe a little bit different way. As much as we had a quarterback room just last year that looked so different from player to player, right? Mm-hmm. Height, body, skill set. Now, potentially, you're starting to see some continuity. Mm-hmm. So once you start getting some continuity, then guess what comes with continuity? Consistency in your plan, consistency mm-hmm. in what they're able to do. So I'm just going to look at it like this. I don't think it's a bad thing for Casey to go. I hate to see him go. I, th- I think he's a great kid. And Jeff is a great kid. Mm-hmm. So you're not losing anything there. I just, you know, you got to be happy for him. And, yeah. and he wants to play. He deserves to play. And to be honest with you, AD, you know, to be honest with you, and and, and this is just being a little, you know, Casey probably being the alpha, and, 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 and I understand it too. He probably thinks like, I'm, I'm, I've done too much. I'm good enough. I don't, I shouldn't have to. Mm-hmm. Play mm-hmm. second fiddle to anybody. Mm-hmm. So, you know, look, it's all good. You know what, Jay? In this defense, too, you think about this, man. This is his last year of eligibility, and he's thinking, like, okay, let's say I do get beat out on this. I mean, some people are going to go both sides of this. You know, I've given a lot up for this program, you know, what she's done. Right. Body, and so, too. Yeah, his body is, you know, body. I'm getting reconstructed. And you know what, Jay? Yeah. Overall, just like you would say, we're going to say, we gotta, we're going to segue out of here, man. But this is yeah. the new world of college football. Would you agree? Oh, yeah. And, and, and that's why you have to plan accordingly. That's why communication needs to be there. And I'm sure the lines of communication, especially with a player like Casey, has been a well, wide hope. I can't speak for, you know, Matt Rule and them, but, but Casey's a guy that, you know, with his dad and, and has his support, that they know how to kind of navigate through the muddy waters. But I'm sure you know, Matt Rule and those guys have been in communication with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think this is a cold turkey situation. So, um, this is the way you got to do. You got to re-recruit your roster, and that's the hardest thing to do because it's about relationships. And the, and the guys that have the best relationships with their players tend to will will get them. Absolutely. You know, everybody's worried about Dion up in Colorado. Same thing happened here, man. It's all good. Pre- appreciate you, Jay Foreman. Jay, appreciate you, little bro. We'll be re- definitely check those guys all out right. later. The captain show coming up next. We have all sorts of things. Breaking news again: Casey Thompson is in the transfer portal officially, folks. Thanks for joining us on AD uh, and Raf on the drive. 